Hi, David. Hi, Sarah. I'd like to bring up the topic of burnout. Uh, cool. It's very <laughs> clear that many highly sensitive people burn out. It's also very clear that lots of people burn out. But I think that there's an interesting link between mm -hmm. high sensitivity and burnout and energy. I burnt out. I really burnt out when I was, I think, 28. And I remember the feeling of it was like I had no spark. I had no will or desire to do anything. It was gone. All my motivation was just completely gone. And I had to lie on a beach for about six weeks. I couldn't do anything. Um, and I meet people often who've burnt out. I know somebody who burnt out and it took him 17 years to sort of more or less get himself back together, but he wasn't really. No. So I, yeah, I would love to hear your take on burnout and then let's just see where we can take it. Okay. Well, it's pretty funny because I was pretty much around the same age when I think I had my largest burnout. But, um, I mean, while I was fully aware of a lot of things that I went on, I because I was in the corporate field and um, just like you, I mean, we both had really big jobs and, you know, you're looking after a lot of, I mean, you, I was looking after loads and loads of people, you know, like every day you're given God knows how many people lists and lists and lists and lists that had to be completed every day. And you were a chef at the time. <laughs> I was, I was still a head chef at that state. Yeah. Well, I wasn't a head chef. I was an executive chef at that stage. And it's, it was pretty young to be an executive chef too, you know, like, and we're yeah, doing a thousand, sorry. 22 well the first time i was 22 i mean but pretty young. i mean that was really young i mean that was ridiculously young and i just fell into that because there wasn't anyone else to sort of pick it up and i said well i'll do it until we get someone else and then i just ended up doing it anyway and then it just carried on from then on but <clears throat> we were doing around um like on a weekend we know we we're doing like over a thousand meals a day which is a lot of meals you know for um for a young head to get his head around and figure out all, lots of moving bits and pieces, you know? So yes. I can't even imagine that. I was a teacher. It's different, but you've got all these kids. It was in a boarding school. So you're responsible for all these 12 mm. year old girls as it happened to be at the time. And yeah, that's also not an easy thing to do. But it's all, it's all the same thing. It's all about responsibility. Because you're, <clears throat> you're, you're responsible for, because we're trying to cover a lot of genres. One, you're trying to cover the genre of all the people. You're trying to cover your boss and bosses and all that and keep all those multiple, multiple personalities all, all happy and, and whatever. And then you've got your products as well, you know, and, and out, outcomes and, and weekly and weekly um, deadlines and weekly things that, or daily actually when you're a chef you're looking at the clock all day you know it's you're counting the minutes bang 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 this you've got a list of maybe hundreds of things sometimes that have all got to be done and and coordinated you know talk about multiple cut tasking you you just I can't even imagine doing something and, like that and the fact that, about, you know yeah. kids and and taking responsibility and timetables and and all the emotion that goes on in mm. a school, it's also it. For, I know in the politics the environment. Yeah, I know they're all they're. I mean, in the. I mean, it doesn't matter which. Every every genre of everything has challenging things. Like, um, yeah. it. I mean, it's crazy. It's. I watched this show called um, uh, where bosses go into the all do all the different jobs of what oh, they really? have you have you seen that no. where no. and and honestly so many people have very little idea of what everybody's actual job was to do and and all these people they just and they undervalued all the people a, a lot of the time and they said well why can't they do this and why can't they do that and when they actually went and tried to do it themselves that's when you find a lot of people didn't have the support you know they, there was nothing there to help them or and that's the thing 
we have to find all those supporting tools. So um, for me, my support was I turned off a lot of my intuition and instinct. And when you do that, you automatically turn off your spirit energy. And we all think of our spirit energy as just something that's there. You know, it's a bit of a given, you know, it's hope it's doing something, but what the hell does it really do? And it's one of those things that has been so completely underestimated because um, as soon as I talk, start working with, um, like I can have a whole workshop of all different genres of people who have all had burnout. Um, I've done a lot of that, especially for the medical and helping and people who are carers and in that community. It's just because they may have been more open to it, but I've also done it for teachers as well. And um, in every case, um, when we start to show people how that they've actually got this spirit component to themselves, which is basically the part that interprets all these different things that we see going on and we coordinate. And when we don't use our spirit, we actually can't see all the little things that are going on around us. But when our, when our spirits work, man, we're just cranking. We see all these different things and we see it way before. And there's a problem even starts to arise. Like you can almost, you're preempting everything. It's like. So I'm guessing when I burn out, that's exactly that, that thing that disappeared from me was exactly. that connection with my spirit. I was just shut down. I was, not sleeping enough i was working too hard i was thinking too much i was just overwhelmed in so many ways that i completely shut off my spirit and i can remember the feeling of when my spirit came alive it was like a spirit it was like a light coming on inside me and i knew that i was going to recover from that moment it was really interesting it's it's a strange feeling isn't it it's one of those things you've got to experience and for me it was like one i couldn't coordinate you know everybody's jobs and whatever and you're working 10 you are working 10 times as hard to do something that is very very simple sometimes and you're yeah, stressing it's... about it you become the stress head you are stressing about absolutely everything yeah. um Terrible because there's no there's no intuition to back you up and the other thing is it's it's um strangely enough it is something that you can go into a new field sometimes and you can see everyone's just doing ABC as they normally do, but it's sort of like you can see where everything's going wrong and you can find where things just aren't coordinated. Like once, once, once you turn that, that spirit back on, you can see all these dis discords everywhere. And, and sometimes it's not even your job and, it's so painfully obvious, but then to sometimes um, you can just ask a, a, a silly question sometimes and just say, well, could we ever think about doing it this way? I mean, sometimes you get your head knocked off, I guess, but um, <clears throat> because often people who are very stressed, if something's sort of, it's, it's functioning to their, to some level of expectation, yeah. I guess it's really important to see this because it it helps to show us why burnout is so devastating. It's mm. you know, we think it's or people often think oh it's just I don't have any energy anymore or whatever. But actually, when you start to see what's happening, what you lose when you burn out. So from from shutting off the spirit, then you lose that intuition. You lose all the things that make life easier. Um, yeah, that, and that make life work naturally without effort. And so you end up putting in more and more effort to try to, to make up for what you've lost. It's not surprising you burn out because you're kind of trying to use your energy in a way that it's not designed to be used. You've got all these faculties, these capacities so naturally, but you've switched them off. And of course it's hard work then. And of course you're not going to get any results. It's like pedaling somewhere on a static bicycle and wondering why you're not getting anywhere. It's like you can't go somewhere without spirit. And the other thing is you you hit right on the topic and it's just where I was going to go next because when you're 
when your spirit, um, it's it's strange. Everyone doesn't think the spirit does much, but without your spirit, your consciousness shuts down. Or what it actually does, once your spirit splits, so does your consciousness. And it's all in all these multiple different little components. It's like we to use an Australian um, slang, it's like you're all, it looks like a dog's breakfast because it's all spread out all over the place. And that's the thing, you you don't, you're trying to use this conscious or that conscious, but you can't use them all simultaneously. Yeah, and then everything gets into, yeah. you get boxes in your head, you get, you feel split, you feel disconnected from yourself and that's crazy. So I, I, I really want to go back a bit to see how does that really happen? You know, we say you, you switch off from your spirit. You switched off from your intuition and, and your natural gifts because it yep. was uncomfortable to be able to know things and see things that other people didn't want you to know and see. Yep. Um, I, I, I switched off a long time. I didn't know that I was sensitive. I just I didn't recognize now that I was. But I tried to be hard. I just tried to go into this like no emotion and so I guess I was probably trying to protect myself from that sense of overwhelm. And I went that way of being hard. And I'm sure that that's the reason in the end it, it just couldn't work. So what's happening to people when they start that journey towards burnout? What are they doing? Okay. It's, it's generally when we're a little bit stressed, um, we detune because your senses are sort of all on overload in some areas yeah so it's a bit like we we're a little bit like a fuse board you know we just we just want to get a bit of a break really so Switch what we do is <laughs> yeah <laughs> so but as soon as we take a couple of those as soon as we detune one area then another area has to take up that slack and then that area is on high sensitivity. So you're not on high sensitivity, you're hypersensitive to certain areas. And then that's when we get the extra, extra stress. As soon as we find that we have all those different components that are detuned and we're not recognizing, because then basically certain things hit the fan and we haven't, we've got no resolve because usually we're preparing all these different areas to move into the next part. So, that, you know, you're always constantly preparing. You're always um, doing all your, um, your preparation for the next move and the next move. But what happens is you get there and you find that there's all these things that haven't been prepared to basically go to the next thing. And then it's panic. So well, I guess the other thing that's happening is that when, when you start to switch off those parts of yourself, you're trying to use the other parts to do something that they're not really made for. So it's, it's not right, only right. that it's got overloaded, but it, it's like if I'm trying to do a job that I have no preparation for, I don't know how to do it, that in itself is really difficult. So you're doing that to bits of yourself. You're making them do stuff that they're not really fit for. And that yeah. puts even more stress on your system. So it's not surprising that it gets worse and worse. The other thing is that once we detune um, energetically, so once once we start, we go through the the part where our spirit just becomes all discombobulated, and then of course the consciousness goes, and then we move on to the the energetics of everything. So as soon as we go to the energetics, we can sometimes think that the energy is sort of moving, but it'll be moving slower or it'll go forward and then it'll go on repeat because certain things haven't been happening. And then all those little repeat parts are the parts that um, we're stressing about and we, they just go in our head, can't get over our head. But there's one thing that we... Um, take out of context, context because as soon as that spirit and consciousness aren't working there's one thing that most people completely and utterly um, ignore or don't know about and that's your power you are limiting the amount of power 
because you're saying I need a break. So when your when your consciousness is saying, just give me a break, buddy, just give me a break. You're down tuning, whether you know it or not. It's on a subconscious level. It's on a subliminal level. And when we're completely stressed, it's on an out of conscious level because it's your, your consciousness sort of splits. <clears throat> so there's no power of getting to that energy to actually move or to send the communication all the way through so that you can actually process the information. So there's a lot of moving parts there, but it's all, so, it so all I guess like, like I, I, what I experienced, cause I know that I know that it doesn't work actually to get into that place of like, just give me a break. It kind of makes me weaker, not stronger. There's a way that I have to turn towards the situation rather than run away from it and open up like it's like I need to turn on my senses rather than turn them off and then I'll find a solution that makes me makes me stronger rather than weaker and everything in me is screaming no just leave me alone I don't want to do that but actually it's like I have to do exactly the opposite of of what I feel like I want to do and I've done that time and time again I, I've I came to recognize that I had to turn towards the challenge and not just try to escape from it. Because that's the, the point where we'll say, oh, stuff this. And if you, even if you had a little bit of a break for a while, sometimes you're lucky enough to bring your spirit back on and it'll all come back, you know? But it just depends on all the circumstances and everything like that. Because sometimes, you know, if we just jump ship here and think, ah, they're all a mob of assholes. I'm going to go work for someone who appreciates me. Yeah. I think that's the point. We're not talking about you never have a rest. Like you can have a no. rest to relax, to open up. That's It's not that. It's that but, thing so, where you bail out at the last minute. You say, yeah. oh, this is never going to work. I give up. No, it, exactly. That way of escaping that doesn't work. And it often happens just before things are about to start working yeah. is when you feel like, <laughs> oh, uh, enough i'm out of here mm -hmm. that's that doesn't work well so to, no, to take a rest because you need some sleep or you need to relax or you need to refresh and rejuvenate yourself that's absolutely a part of supporting your your sensories that's right and all and all your sensories they they unfortunately when when we do need know our sensories need a break we do the wrong thing one yes. we drink too much will go and have a few um, or if you smoke um, weed or whatever to relax because that actually splits your sensories even more in the same but as all if you the know. escape behaviors is what we all, all the all the escape behaviors well, they're eating. actually and they and they stay in your system so it's not it's not really it's not really going to happen you know you're not going to de-stress because they, they can't if you're if you're doing that then all your sensories are going to go into hypersensitivity then yeah yeah and you've tried it haven't you i know i tried it so it doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> you're not speaking from a holier than thou position you tried no, it. i mean I, I did it for donkey's years you know i i tried to i tried i tried that and um you know it just doesn't work and you've got to turn all and then then you've got to really detox your body really well because you've got all because then when you do that <clears throat> you end up with all these blockers and our sensories have miles and miles of blockers which is why then i ask everybody to have that's why i know about lemon bars and why i know they work so well because we all have all these loads and loads of sensory blockers that you've turned off and you try and send the message through and it's just not going to happen because you've detuned so much. And our energy systems then go from neutral energy where our energy is just all flowing. We go to highly over positive and we go to highly over negative. And then there's all this discord. So the energy systems never actually meet. So when we go back to... I see people often, they, they swing from, oh, this is amazing. It's incredible what's happening. And the next time I see yeah. them, 
that they're really down, it's really difficult, and they're trying to pump themselves to get up high again. And they, they go on this roller coaster and it's absolutely exhausting. And they're no, constantly it's... looking to be in that high place all the time, but it's that's not sustainable because it's not a natural kind of neutral positivity. It's, no, it's, it's very not. forced. It's yeah. forced. And it's like, it's like where you, you, um, you know, self-motivational things, you know, where everyone's pumping you up and pumping you up and you're just burning out. You've got to have a natural um, enthusiasm and a love for what you're doing. It doesn't, you know, you can pump people up. It's not going to last for a while. No. So let's come back to people who might be watching this. So if somebody's looking at themselves and thinking, I'm on the way to burning out. Mm -hmm. I reckon we've already given them the best starting advice. Have a lemon bath. We've made a video about that. Learn how to ground and ground your energy every day because that will start to turn the senses on instead of yep. switching them off. Is there something else that you try and get as much try and get as much sleep as you can? Yeah. Um, and try and watch your diet. Keep all the sugars out. You know. Um, try and because um, a block of chocolate isn't really, you know, sitting down, um, feeling sorry for yourself and eating a block of chocolate and binging on stuff doesn't really help. You know, it's looking after yourself, like just get out and walk. And if you run, run. For me, it was running. I mean, honestly, I've, I've been a runner for a long, long time, unfortunately, but it's it does it does come at a cost because then your knees and your hips become a little bit stuffed. So, but for me, as soon as I, like I'd finish a shift and then I'd, I'd because I live on the, um, on the ocean, I'd, I'd run for kilometers and then come home. And then it, it, it really helped my, it just, you get out of that headspace because you, you're giving yourself a little bit of a breather and like, um, and that I found really helped and um, it allowed me to just find myself again. and. And then I started going back and, and doing all the stuff that I did as a kid. But um, yeah, even... I mean, I, I learned, I was taught how to relax, like mm -hmm. a relax in a way that you receive energy. So you get refreshed. Yeah. And I do that every day. I don't think that I could survive even now uh, without doing that. And, and being in nature can be really important. For yeah. some people. It is really important. I see as many people, they work in corporate jobs where it's a very harsh environment. It's really demanding. And especially on sensitive people, they feel overwhelmed almost just walking into the office and then all the people and the politics. So they have to deal with all of that as well. Yeah, but there's also, oh God, I have so many people who, so many young guys who I've talked to in, um, oh, now I've gone broke. I'm gone blank. You know, in computers and, yeah, IT. and IT and all sorts of all that sort of stuff. And it's like, man, they're just under the pump, and it's like grinding, grinding, grinding. And you think some, um, it's must be one of the harshest climates I've ever seen. And that it's, and banking. We used to yeah. work with a lot of bankers, and they were under unbelievable pressure. But I well. will say that learning to relax every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes or half an hour literally would give them, they would come back and say, wow, I've got like three hours a day more energy. Or yeah. they would say, I've got energy now to be able to hang out with my kids and my wife in the evening and enjoy it rather than come home completely shattered. So there are quite simple things, the grounding, the relaxing, the, but you have to, you have to, you have to actually want to look after yourself like recognize yeah. that you are worth it because burning out is allowing yourself to be run by an organization it's like your life to be taken over by an organization and yeah. and you're in charge the the organization doesn't own you even if they pay your bills no they don't so there's always you know there's an always a different outcome but you're right because and that's, you hit on one of the most important parts because otherwise when you come home and you're tired and you're grumpy and then when your household falls apart, that's that's the end one. Because then you don't have any support. You you've, got no nothing. you've got nothing. You've got nothing. Honestly, when your household falls apart, that's really, that's the last straw. 
So it's better to watch the warning signs. There's so much information around now mm. for people who are who are showing signs that they might burn out. I, I, I just really want to say that because I think that if you're very driven like I was and I'm sure you were, David, you, you ignore the signals and that's really the problem. That's why you burn out is because you actually ignore everything that's screaming no, you at do. you. You completely and absolutely, you, you ignore all the signals and... Um, you know the signals. Because we're also on a little bit of an adrenaline rush yet. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes there are things we don't want to see in our life. We don't want to look at what's no, really going on. We don't. But if you keep running for that long. Um, Speak, yeah. Speaking of that, I know when I went on holidays, um, sometimes I had a lot of trouble trying to relax because you're used to that adrenaline. Yeah. Adrenaline rush and that. And that that's also a bit. That's a bit hard too, you know. So it takes to, a little while to. Sorry. That's when we. That's when we do need to do all those different exercises because they. They keep your power cycles. Rather than going like this, it's just more. Supportive, so when you do the relaxation, as Sarah's talking about, you keep the power base as nice and easy, and it just gives you all the different components of your body um even in the physical level just to be able to recuperate because otherwise you're just too damn tired all the time you know and it gives you energy you just feel this energy it's like the energy starts to yeah. flow through you you feel alive the old stuff gets released you you, you feel alive and that's what we want and then and you literally have energy you can do things whereas before you were exhausted and that makes an enormous difference. Just, just and it, and it is, feel that. And it is getting away from the computer. It's very easy to say, oh, I've got to do it, I've got to do that. But honestly, it gets to a certain time of day and I don't care who you are or what you are, I'm out of here. You're really good at that. I just, I just, I don't care. Like people send me loads and loads of emails. Too bad. I'll talk to you at another time. Nothing is more important than my health. Yeah. Honestly, it gets to a point no, either my support will, will get back to you or I'll get back to you tomorrow. I'm sorry, too bad. Don't care because nothing is more important than your health because I've been sitting here talking to clients and groups and all day and uh, it gets to the point, no, that's it, done, gone, too bad. So what if somebody's actually burnt out? They've they they've got to that point. They can't go on. They've probably had to leave their work. Um, and I've met people who've left and they think, oh, give me six months and I'll be back. Or give me three months. And after six months or after two years, they really don't have the energy to go back to work. No, they don't because... That's really, really tough. Oh, no, it's really hard. Well, you could probably come and do one of our workshops. <laughs> I reckon that's exactly... <laughs> And then, it, and then if and then if it's really still really really, um, you found some points because sometimes we go. Even burnout isn't a good definition. It's like you're you've burnt and smouldered and <laughs> you know it's you know what I mean. Some I mean I've met some pretty hard cases. You know over. Well, the sometimes period. it's actually like your entire maybe your entire the way you've grown up, that your way of doing things actually doesn't suit yeah. you. And you, so you actually need to change quite a lot, which can be daunting. But on the other hand, if you do it and you find you, so to speak, you find a way of living that suits you, that's such a beautiful thing. It's worth the challenge of doing it. Because I think sometimes people are just brought up in families where all the habits that they learn are just not the right habits for them. They, they, yeah, it just, it yeah, doesn't work for them at all and they've got to learn how to live again but it mm. is worth it because you can do it also I find um, there's a lot of people who found um, that while you have the burnout and then there's all these different circumstances that are going on it doesn't mean that you've got to go back into that specific role either 
Yes. Sometimes, because once you turn on and you turn your intuition on, um, you find a totally different um, genre sometimes. Like I know so many people who've become consultants and or, or just, yeah. Code, yeah, but just different different areas, you know. Or, well, often people discover they want to help people more. They don't want to be yeah. in the grind. Yeah. And so they shift their career and that brings its own challenges because they don't always know how to start a business, for example. Um, and there's a whole lot of other stuff to learn. But you, it is, you do start to change what you care about when you, when you change the way you live. And it's important to recognize that. I think the other thing is that life is changing very fast at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people are gonna feel they're burning out just because their ways of doing things are becoming old because we're evolving very rapidly. And that's challenging because you don't quite know where you are and you don't know, it's like, I don't know who I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I just feel that everything I do is wrong or everything I do doesn't work. I see this with quite a lot of business owners, especially men um, who things that worked 10 years ago don't work anymore and they put themselves under so much stress. So we're all having to learn actually how to be more open, how to be more intuitive, more sensitive, more alive. We also, um, as we, we use our intuition, we have, it's, I mean, you've only got to look at kids. I mean, they're the best example of anything. Like the way you used to um, parent a child is, is so completely different. And they don't, no one comes with a set of instructions on what to expect, you know, and our lives are exactly the same. So we've got to change or change, change, change. But the biggest thing is, is don't bury your head in the sand. Like, I know we all like, something works and we like it and it's just like oh i can just relax now mate as soon as, you, as soon as as soon as you relax and you do that you know the wheel's going to fall off unfortunately because we are you know we are you know in a in a time where everything's just changing so much and it also means sometimes we've got to communicate i think a lot differently with all with all the people you're working with and if you if you work by yourself i think it's really important to um make groups you know and have a little bit of um be able to have a conversation about different different aspects of absolutely everything so that together you can find a situation because Otherwise, we're trying to confront things all the time and you're the one who becomes confronted, yeah? Yeah. And so it's then if we're just gently, gently seeing things and you're talking to, to peers and everything like that, I mean, sometimes you can think everything's a competition, but sometimes your peers are often the ones, you know, you find, you find this um, equilibrium that, it's good for everybody and and sometimes you say well what about if you did this and i did that and then you did this and you sort of re you basically redirect you kind of reorganize everything in a way that's actually natural for it's, people rather than yeah just... yeah and it's and it's everyone's good at it's some component of work you know and um then the parts that stress you out because often we're coming into parts now that stress you out. Like, I mean, IT, I hate IT. It's like, I've got to find someone to do it. And, but as long as I don't do it, my my job goes swimmingly. And, and, this, and if I had to do IT all the time, man, I'd be a mental mess. But I outsource it and I have other people doing it and life goes on, you know, and I do the bit that I'm good at. But that's the thing. We've all got to find those bits and not be afraid to ask for help, you know, because, um, and find, and find those people, you know, because, um, when you, but at the same time, don't always believe that someone, just someone says, Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Because sometimes you've got to look a little bit deeper because sometimes they can't either. So I think the thing that, that it would be good to end on is to say that it is, 
like even if you've had a very tough run with burnout because it can be very tough you can recover from it you are going to change your life you can't recover from it and go back to where you were before because that's what caused it so it's really important to recognize that pretty wholeheartedly it's an opportunity to change your life for the better so that you actually enjoy your life and live live a better life um, and the more you can embrace that the more likely you are to recover but but it is important to realize that people can people do rebuild their lives into yeah. a much better one um, it often takes longer than they expected i think there's more change often than we think we're going to need um, Maybe it's useful to know that in advance so you're not so surprised. The other thing that I think is really important to realize is that it's one of those journeys where all the, there are definitely ups and downs, but you start getting small wins pretty much as soon as you start to engage with it. So as soon as you recognize there's an issue here and I'm going to do something, some things start to get better. And so it's not like you have to do a lot and then you get all the results at the end. It's something where you just gradually get better and better and you find more, you discover more about yourself, you get your energy working better. Um, so it's quite rewarding along the way because you do learn a lot about yourself and a lot about life in the process. And never underestimate um, the resources of your family, you know, because sometimes when you're just talking with certain about certain prospects, it, your partners can often see certain things that you can't, you know, <laughs> or they That's see it. Sure. <laughs> I mean, but you've got to listen to them sometimes too, you know, um, but we do, um, there's a lot of different uh, genres of, of, of jobs where I know nurses have gone back and they go back to the nursing, but they find their love of nursing and, but they do it, completely differently and and teachers you know they they go back and they they teach completely differently so and much better yeah yeah, yeah. so so i'm going to put um a link under the video for gosh. our next workshop we run workshops every few months and you can sign up at any time for the next one um, because it's such an important topic if and you you know either that you're a risk or you've already hit it um, it will really help you to get your energy flowing because burnout is fundamentally you run out of energy and, and as David said you have no spirit so if you can connect your spirit again and get your energy moving you're not going to be burnt out anymore so um, yeah please do sign up for that next free webinar you can come and find out about it and actually do some exercises and um, then you'll see how you feel as a result of that thank also, you uh, okay also just one other thing um, once we start to do those exercises, our energy starts to move and consciousness and spirit all starts to move. But the one thing that starts to happen is that once everything moves, it's information. And once you receive all these little bits of information, then we, not only do we become more confident, but the big thing is we start to enjoy life again, or we enjoy what we used to enjoy. And that's really important because we're at work a long time and it's really important that we enjoy what we do or really we've got to find a new vocation. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you very much, David. It's, um, it's an interesting topic and uh, I think it's extremely relevant for a lot of people. So um, mm -hmm. that was a good exploration. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah.